Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today we have lots to talk about. Let's find out what's on the hook and literally what's on the hook this week are lots and lots of whips and I'm going to go through and show you all the whips that I'm working on not the ones that are in timeout but all the whips that I'm working on right now and I'm going to make some decisions this week about which ones to proceed with because I can only make so many things at a time and then I lose track of what I'm doing or why I'm doing it or when I need to have it done. So all those are part of my decision making for these particular whips. So I'm going to talk about those. I think there are eight in all. And then I'm going to talk about some tips that I had mentioned last week I was going to do a video about some crochet tips and things that I might be able to help you with in your crochet journey and I'm going to do that today only I will uh, bring up maybe four tips or however many I have time for and then I'll finish that maybe in my next Thursday's video so let's go there later now right now I'd like to give a quick shout out to Kim at Kim's Crochet and Knits she is the hardest working YouTuber I know and she does live streams, she does crochet, she does diamond painting, she knits, she does amigurumi, she does all that. And uh, she manages to have a family at home and all that. So she is a very, very, very hard worker and I respect that. So I'm going to put her YouTube channel link down in the description box. And if you have time and I would like for you to go down there and at least... Uh, click on it and watch one of her videos. Maybe subscribe if you want to. Be sure to like. And that will give her a little bit of juice because she is just past 2,000 subscribers. She's working on three now. And like I said, she's a very hard worker. So Kim, this is your shout out. I wish you well in the future. I jump onto her live stream sometimes and join in the fun in the conversation. It is fun to talk about all kinds of different things so um, I'm on there every now and then and a lot of other people join up so uh, be sure to check out her live stream if uh, if you'd like uh, some fun just to kind of sit and watch what's going on maybe you have your project in front of you and are crocheting or painting or whatever you're doing so Kim that's your shout out for the week my my third thing I want to talk about is what I'm wearing and I'm wearing the summer cottage cardi and I put this on this morning. It's just a tiny bit cool today. So I'm wearing it with a tank top and I will show you what it looks like. This is a pattern that's in my Etsy shop. I have a lot of people who have made this. It's very easy to make and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But I'm going to stand up and model this for you. Okay, this is the Summer Cottage Cardi and I'm just modeling it very quickly for you. It is an open front Cardi that I wear with a tank top usually. And it can be worn in the late summer or fall if you're trying to stay warm in an air conditioned environment. You can wear it with a long sleeve tee under it. It looks really pretty with the white. Well, mine does because I made it out of white comfy cotton by Lion Brand mixed with and held with dotted line by Lion Brand. But that is not available anymore, but it's a number two. So I, I crocheted together a number three comfy cotton with a number two yarn and it went very very quickly it has a ribbed edge around the front and along the, along the hem in the back here's the back this is what it looks like from the back so um, I just wanted to show this to you because it's a very comfortable top it's very easy to make and when you combine the two yarns together it's a lot faster to crochet I actually have another pattern out there called the Cardi Vest and that's kind of for fall and winter but it's made in the same way by crocheting from the front all the way over to the back hem and then back around to the front. So you're doing this whole section left and left side or right side together at the same time. And then you go to the other side and crochet it all at once onto the, the other the side that you've already crocheted. So it's very, very fast. It goes very, very quickly. And then I add a quick rib around the front on the front edge and also on the hemline. So it was uh, a quick crochet as I call it and you can whip one of these up and get it in your closet and start wearing it. So I used the blue dotted line because I wanted to wear this with jeans and it also looks very pretty with a white skirt. I have an off-white skirt that I wear it to church with and also it looks good with a blue jean skirt. 
So if you're into that kind of thing, this is a perfect little top to wear over a tank top or a t-shirt and um, it's just a very nice addition to your wardrobe. Now on to the whips and tips. I'm going to show you all of my whips that I have going on right now. Some of you have asked me questions about my whips and so I'm just going to answer them all at one time. Now the first whip that I have is a new pattern and here this is made with Beautiful You yarn, and I know I have talked about Beautiful You quite a bit. I ordered a lot of it last year, and it's a number three yarn. It's uh, kind of a small three. It's not a very large three, so um, you, it's got a very nice drape to it, though. And I, I found five balls of this that I had ordered. This is a Rubio's red, kind of a red color very very pretty I love that red I think that's my favorite color right now I just love this red and this is a good color to bridge summer and uh, fall with actually it's a really good color for that because you can wear it with white you can wear it with navy blue or denim you can wear it with all colors that I can even imagine even with yellow look at that pretty yellow stitch marker on there <laughs> come up with all these combinations but I am coming up with this. This is a ribbed at the bottom. And what I've done here, let me explain what I'm doing with my hook. This is a K hook. This is a large hook. This is a 6.5 millimeter hook. That is not the hook that is recommended for this yarn because it makes the yarn very drapey. Look how drapey that is. Now that's what I'm going for with this particular cardigan. It's going to be a cardigan with a special stitch pattern and I'm making it back and then two fronts so it won't be made like this summer cardi but it'll be made in the standard way in three pieces and then I may add some sleeves to it I don't know I probably will since I'll have lots and lots of yarn and um, we're moving into fall now eventually when I finish this it'll probably be July and then um, just another month or two and it'll be cool so I will move into those colors in the fall so Again, this is made with a K-hook, beautiful U yarn, 100% acrylic, and this is what it looks like. Let me get something behind it here, maybe just my hand. This is the bottom right here of the, of the cardigan. It has a pretty substantial piece of ribbing there, and then the stitch pattern is an open stitch pattern. It's not just a double crochet, skip one, double crochet. It's, it's done in a different way. So it will have some interest besides just a regular window pane that sometimes I'll do. This is going to be a little bit different. It's more like a, a dotted line, sort of like that. But you'll see when I move forward on this and start working on it uh, a little bit more, I will show you the progress that I've made on it. But this will be a new pattern. And right now the working name is the Light and Airy Cardigan because it's going to have a lot of drape to it. And all you need is a size 3 acrylic yarn that is very, very uh, drapey. That it's, um, you can tell when you look at a yarn. If it's soft, if it's drapey, maybe it has some nylon in it. Sometimes that will give a yarn a very nice drape when you use it with crochet. So I'm, I'm thinking that that is going to be bridging this late summer and early fall. And this is the perfect color to do it with. It's a beautiful color. And there are lots of other colors in it. I was in Hobby Lobby the other day, and I saw, so I went through the yarn department, which I always do, and I'm trying not to buy any new yarn. I'm trying desperately not to buy any new yarn. I'm trying to use my stash. And I have lots and lots of sweater quantities over there, so I'm starting some sweaters with that so that I can move forward and, and maybe move some of that stash into my wardrobe, which is the whole idea and having stashes to use it, I think, eventually use it. So I'm just, I was in uh, Hobby Lobby the other day and I saw some beautiful, beautiful yarns, um, absolutely beautiful yarns. And a lot of them look like Lion Brand yarns. I did see the number five cotton blend yarn from Lion Brand. I know that it was the same yarn and it was in Hobby Lobby with a different brand on it. So you can get Lion Brand yarns in there, and I, I didn't see a beautiful U copy. I didn't see that, but there may easily be one. I don't know, but um, and I'm not sure if you can even get this anymore. Someone said they were having trouble finding it, so um, 
anyway I have a I have a bunch of it here and I thought well I will use that and if someone wants to make my pattern they can use a different yarn I always say that in my patterns you can use it any kind of yarn you want you don't have to use the yarn that I used but try to have the yarn have the same attributes as the yarn that I use so that it will look like what I made in my pattern. So again, this is the light and airy Cardi and I'm thinking that um, this will come out fairly soon. I, I want to get this out the door sometime next month. So that will be a whip in pro a work in progress at WIP made with an H hook. All right, moving on. This is the just the uh, summer top. I'm, I'm not even calling it anything because it may just be a very plain uh, pattern. It's I've got it marked here on the front. That's what you see with that little stitch marker there. This also has rib at the bottom. This is a sport yarn that I purchased from Knit Crate and um, it's a Vita Lana yarn and it's very pretty. It's, it has Stellina in it which is a Kind of a blingy yarn and when I bought this I'm sure that I showed this to you on a video because I remember doing that doing that but this is kind of a big number three it's a it's a big it's a big yarn it's almost a four I'd say it's probably close to a four and when I made it up it did look like that and I'm using a J hook with this and it may be even too close together I don't know but I didn't want to be able to see through it and I'll probably chain out for some short sleeves here and just make it a plain little top nothing extremely special but I had a sweater quantity of this and it's more of a summer color than it is a winter color so I thought I would use it to make a summer top made with short sleeves something I can just throw on and would be comfortable this is Audine Wool's Twinkle DK and this was sponsored by Christy Glass Knits when she was promoting this. This is the color Knit Yorker and it is 80% merino wool, 10% cashmere, 10% stellina. So that is what it's made from right there. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. This is it in the hank. This is it in the ball. So it looks exactly the same pretty much. I mean, it, it doesn't have any variations in color. It's a solid color yarn. See that is solid color. It doesn't have any color pooling or anything like that. I do love it. I love it, but it's not as soft as I'd like it to be, even though there's part of it is cashmere. Um, there's no nylon in here, but I, I've noticed since I've started working with it, it's not as soft as I thought it was when I first, I think I received this in a knit crate box. I'm sure I did. And I went, oh, that's really nice. That's soft. But honestly, unless you move it against your skin like that and you feel like you can, that feels a little bit rough. So I'm going to proceed on and make the top and I'll like it or not. I don't know. It depends on how far I get with that particular whip. The third whip that I have is a, a remake of the Easy Tweety sweater. And I had that on on Monday. Love that sweater. I wish I could find the Tweety um, uh, yarn again but it's not available so I bought the King Cole Drifter which is a double knit it's a three you know size three in blue and browns all right the jury's out on this I'm really not sure what I'm going to do with it I've made a pretty good size swatch this is the right side of the sweater and this is what it looks like can you see that it's very stripy this is a very stripy yarn. I didn't think it was going to be. I don't know why I thought that. I thought that the, the, the color lengths were going to be very, very short, but they're actually not. And so when you crochet with it, you have a pretty good sized stripe going on there. And then, unfortunately, the change in color is very abrupt. Here's one right here from the beige to the blue. I mean, there might be one stitch in there <laughs> with both colors. And then it just stops and it goes to the blue and to me that's a very stripy look now I'm going to continue on with this I thought about it this morning and I think I'm going to go ahead and finish the easy Tweety sweater and we'll see how it looks in a stripe I have a lot of self striping yarn I have a couple of cakes of Karen cotton cakes that I thought I might make the Tweety sweater out of but I didn't reach for that. I reached for the drifter because it's very, very soft. It's partially wool as well. 
And um, let me see exactly what's in here. This is 25% cotton, 6% wool, and 69% acrylic. So it's basically an acrylic yarn, but it has a little bit of other things in it. And it is a beautiful yarn. Again, this is available on an Etsy shop that I put. I'll put another link down in the description. They have a lot of this Drifter King Cole yarn. However, it's not my favorite, only not because it's not soft. It is very soft and very smooth on your skin, but it's a little bit stripy. And you know me, I'm not a real big stripy fan, but I may continue on with this. I've kind of decided to go ahead and do that. Finish the Easy Tweety Sweater and just do it in a stripy yarn and see how it looks. And I'm making this with an eye hook that's a 5.5 millimeter. So that's what I'm doing with this whip. The fourth whip that I'd like to speak about today is my beautiful U top. And now I have fashioned this a little bit differently. I'm using a stitch pattern on here, but it's basically the same top as Crystal's wearing right here. And Crystal's wearing the beautiful U top that I talked about last week. I love this top. I had it on again the other day and it is so comfortable. I thought, well, I'm going to make another one of these. And the reason I like this so much, besides it being red, is the nice big neckline that I put in here. I do like that. It's a nice summer neckline. It's a chain out for the sleeves right here. It's very easy to do. Very, very easy to chain out for these sleeves. And the stitch pattern is very plain, but it's beautiful done in this solid color. For some reason, the stitch pattern looks really, really nice. And it's not anything fancy, it's a, it's a double crochet. All the way across, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet. But it looks really nice in the beautiful U yarn. So I decided I'll make another one of these. Well, I thought I'd get fancy and, thank you, Crystal. I thought I'd get fancy and do double crochet row and then a, a V stitch row, a double crochet row and a V stitch row. And there is what, that's what that looks like. And it is pretty. I'm going to continue with this just to make it a little bit different from that top. But that in itself is a very fine top. It looks beautiful and it's, it's just a beautiful summer top and it's so comfortable besides. But I'm going to continue on with this and make that beautiful U top right there. And I'm not sure how I made this. It's, I think it might be the Foxy Boxy, but I'm not really sure. I think that's the one I used to make this. But it is just a basic top where um, you chain out for the sleeves when you get to the underarm. You just chain out to the sleeve for the sleeves as long as you want them. And then continue on with half of your top and all the while de decreasing along the neckline while you're stitching those sleeves. So you're decreasing over here and you're stitching out for your sleeve there. And it's just a straight line. There's no decreasing on the sleeve itself. But on the neckline there is decreasing to give it that nice uh, round neckline that I that I use for that particular top. So as I move through this, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about how I made it, but that's what I'm doing so far with this beautiful U. And the colorway is Spanish Villa. The colorway is Spanish Villa. Again, a beautiful pink, rosy color. Not too much rose, it's more, more of a really sweet pink there. And that's what I'm doing with that yarn. Moving on to a whip that actually has a project bag. <laughs> These have not graduated to a project bag yet because I don't have enough project bags. And um, I probably need to empty some out, but I'm not ready to do that. So I'm gonna to have to come up with another idea for project bags. But anyway, this does have a little project bag by Elder Stitches. This young lady has a YouTube channel called Susie B. And she's just about to have a baby, so it's really exciting to hear her talk about her new nursery and everything. I'm way past that now. My kids are grown, but I do love to hear young ladies talk about their beautiful new nurseries. This is the new top called the Soft Linen Tea. I'm going to write this pattern because it's a beautiful pattern. I've, I've, if I do say so myself, this is a, the, this is the back of the sweater. It has a beautiful yoke on it. The yoke is. Um, pretty deep. It comes to right about, you know, right about here um, on the back and of course the front will match it and the yoke will start here. And it's turned out to be a little bit heavy because this is kind of a yarn hog right here. So if you plan to make this you might want to buy an extra skein of yarn just so you don't run out. 
and there is the yoke it is done in stitch links like lines of stitches using back post and front post stitches so this will be the the yoke in the back the the sweater is done in a boxy manner it's quite a bit wider than i am when i'm designing a a sweater pattern i usually make sure that i have lots and lots of yarn this is how much yarn i have left and it's probably 80 grams it's quite a bit i mean i haven't used that much out of it but i'm only here i'm only this far on the front all right I have not, I haven't even re reached the yoke point yet, like I did on the back. And uh, when I do, I'll make a square neckline and all that. But I don't have enough yarn. I know that I'm not going to have enough. This is not going to do it because I have to make a yoke on both sides, of course. And then I have to put some kind of sleeve in it, whether it be very short or, you know, elbow length. I need some more of this yarn. If you know anybody that has any, I'll be glad to buy it from them. I did go on to D-Stash, which is a, a website, actually, that you can list things that you want to swap or sell. And I went on there and I did find a girl who had two hanks of this Beaches color in the Audine Wools. However, Audine Wools Interlock, excuse me, that's what that is. I have not heard back from her. I don't know if she still has the yarn or what, but it's the only place I could find this on the internet. The only place that had any of this yarn. So if you're a member of Knit Crate and you received these two in a box and you've not done anything with them, please contact me and I will buy it from you. So there I have stopped crocheting on this top because I know I'm not gonna have enough yarn to finish it and I don't want to get all the way to almost being done and be out of yarn and not be able to find it. So I'm stopping that project right now until I find the yarn. So as soon as I find the yarn, I will continue on with that. So I'm making that with an H hook 5.0 millimeter. The size of this yarn is a sport yarn, so it's pretty small. This yarn is really a size 3 weight and then I'm using an H hook to, to crochet it. So it's gonna be really nice. It has nice drape. It's just, I don't have enough yarn. So I'm gonna to have to find some more yarn before I finish that project. Another project I have in the works is the Summertime Cardi, which is this pattern. And this pattern is for um, a good, a substantial size cardigan, but I'm not doing that. I am making this cardigan out of some beautiful Vitalana, oh, I'm sorry, some beautiful Malabrigo, which is the Violetus color. I've shown this before. It's the Violetus color. Beautiful, beautiful purple. This is just purple, is what it is. It's beautiful. And it is a little bit, uh, it does show a little bit of color pooling as I crochet. So here it is again. I don't think I've gotten very far since I um, showed this last time. I have a little design element here at the bottom, the color pooling on the sweater, if you can see that. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love that. I don't like stripey. I don't mind color pooling, though. I do like color pooling. But this is as far as I've gotten, and I do think I have plenty of yarn for this. I'm not making it as long as the Summertime Cardi. I'm only coming down a little below the waist, right about this length. This is probably about the length that I'm going to make it. The other cardigan was halfway down my hip, probably another three or four inches. I think it's four inches shorter than the original Summertime Cardi. So that will cause me to use less yarn and it should be faster to make. And that's a good thing when you shorten things and make them smaller, then they don't take as long to make. So that is that project that I have in the works. Another project that I have in the works is a, a, a second go around with the Winterscape Wrap. And this is the Winterscape Wrap. It's on my Etsy shop, love it. Easy to follow, but it's really easy when you start working on it. It's not hard at all. You just follow the same directions. You can, you can sort of memorize the, the instructions. It's not hard to do. You're increasing on the sides, so you know when you get to the end of a row what to do, what to do at the beginning of a row. And I'm making this out of two yarns that I received from the Malabrigo Crate. I showed these last week. They are so beautiful. And let me find the name of that. Oh, it's Worsted or 
washed, excuse me, it's washed. It's worsted yarn that has been washed, and that's the only thing I can figure out. Why they named it that, I don't know. These are in the colorway Petal, P-E-T-A-L. This is A and B. I don't know which one is which, but they're very beautiful, and this is what they look like made up in the Winterscape wrap. I'm going to do it in stripes, so the next piece I'll do here, as I'm moving down, I'll do a stripe about this wide of the multicolored yarn and then a stripe of the red multicolor until I run out of yarn or I have a big enough scarf. I don't know which. I might just make it a scarf instead of a wrap. This is a wrap. This is a winterscape wrap and it's, you know, pretty substantial. I don't know if I want to do that. I might want to wear it as a scarf because it's so beautiful. I'm um, not sure I'm going to wear lots of wraps. I didn't wear a whole lot of them this winter. I really would prefer a scarf with a pretty sweater or something like that, um, or a blouse, and or under a jacket. That's kind of how I wear my neck wraps, or a cowl is a, uh, an easy add-on to an outfit. Very simple. It doesn't get in your way. It doesn't fall off. You don't have to keep messing with it. But the Winterscape wrap, I actually put a big button right here so I didn't have to worry with it too much. And you can turn it around and wear the button in the back or wear it up on your shoulder. And it does give the, it does give the uh, wrap a, a nice look. And it's a, uh, really, it's a scarf. That's probably where I'm going with that. So I won't be crocheting this huge... Uh, piece of crochet I'm going to just crochet enough to make a nice scarf and so that I can wrap it around and it looks pretty with a black top or something like that so that's where I'm going with that that is not something I'm working on right away I am taking my time on that because it's more for the fall and winter next on my list of whips is um, another version of the sea and sky that is the pattern the sea and sky this is one of my favorite sweaters to wear and the reason it is I think part of it is that it was made from Audine Wool's fingering yarn and I know it took me a long time to make it I was almost a year making that but it, not every day but I was working on it and I liked the the, the arms I like the sleeves excuse me I like the sleeves how they came down below my elbow just a little bit the body of the sweater is very comfortable it has a little bit of a scoop neck so I found this yarn in my stash, which I'm, again, trying to work through. And this yarn is Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima Cotton. That's a number three yarn. So I started this particular um, top. This is the Sea and Sky, and it's nothing like fingering yarn. This is nothing like fingering yarn. This is a size three. And it's pretty enough. It's pretty enough. It has a pretty rib at the bottom. It turned out nicely. And I have a little bit of a stitch pattern going here, or a row pattern, actually. It's a row pattern. And it gives it a little bit of interest. And I like it. I like it because, actually, I'm making it right by the pattern. This has a stitch row pattern as well. So I'm making it by that particular pattern. And I'm making it in one size larger yarn. So we'll see how that goes using a J hook with this. I have a lot of yarn, <laughs> but probably five hanks of this. So I have plenty of yarn to finish this sea and sky. So that is another project that I have in the works. Now, if you saw the name of my thumbnail, it said whips and tips. All right, those are the whips. They're done. I'm not going to show those anymore until I have a substantial amount of work done on one or more of them. So I'm not going to revisit those anytime soon, but I did want to show you those. And then the tips that I have for you. These are some tips that I've been thinking about. And when I think of something, I'll write it down and I put it in my planner. And then I thought, you know what? I have 10 of these now, so I probably should do a video and, or at least do part of uh, a video with the tips in it so that I can help y'all when you go to make a sweater or a top, a cowl or something like that that you'll be able to um, remember these tips and think about them when you start to make uh, one of my patterns or someone else's patterns. So the first tip that I have is to read the pattern all the way through. Now I say this in my patterns, I try to remember to put it in every pattern. 
don't just read the intro, grab your hook and your yarn and start working. You really need to read through the whole pattern so that you can see how the sleeves are, are crocheted on, how the top is done, how the sweater is structured, whether you make it all in one piece like this or if you do backs and fronts and read how you measure yourself because some sweaters are different way to measure you might measure from here over you might measure all the way over you might measure from and in one of my new patterns you'll be measuring from the shoulder to your elbow and then minus some for the for the edging so we're going to do that as well i just wanted to remind you that when you buy a pattern, and I always have done this because I love patterns. I have a file drawer full of patterns. I'm serious. They're my patterns, everyone else's patterns, patterns that I've uh, been gathering for the last 20 years are in that file drawer. And I don't go through it very often. I just have a hard time giving up patterns because somebody somewhere designed that pattern and they spent their time writing down everything. So when I get a new pattern, I will always read it from front all the way to the end. I've been also buying knit patterns because when I ever learn to knit, I have some great patterns that are beginner knitting patterns that I'll already have in my file drawer so I won't have to go buy them and find them. I already have them in a little folder in there and they're waiting for me to learn how to knit. I know someday I'm going to have to. But always read the pattern from one end to the other always from the beginning to the end if you have anything that you need to make a note about my my second tip is to make a note walk through the pattern and write down if you think you need to change your yarn here or if you need to change your color here if you're making stripes you know make notes make notes if you change the hook size make a note because the next time you make that you'll want to know well, I wonder what hook I was using I have no idea. Did I use Jeannie's hook or did I use my own hook size? I mean, you just don't know and you will forget, I promise you, because it's not important to remember that for the next two months until you go back and make it again. So be sure to write it down. And I take a highlighter and I highlight all the way through the pattern. What do I need to make sure I do or don't do? And sometimes when you're making a pattern that is sized, mine are not sized, but if you're making a sized pattern, you should always go through from the beginning to the end and highlight every size stitch count or row count that you need to so that you don't miss it or you, you don't use the wrong number. I've done that many times. I've started out making a medium and then I start looking at the small numbers, back to the medium numbers, and then I wonder why didn't this turn out? A lot of times it's my own fault because I made it wrong. Now, I don't haven't made anybody else's patterns for a while. But as I say, I've got a file drawer full of them. And I can see where I went through and I actually did that because it's so important to know where you're going before you get started. Another tip that I have for making my patterns or anyone's patterns is don't stop in the middle of a row. I know that that sounds silly. And if you're in the middle of a row, look at where you're going. Okay, so set that down and flip it over three or four times and then figure out which way you, you need to be crocheting. Now, if you're an experienced crocheter, you'll know exactly which way to go. I personally, and I admit this, when I was making a scarf one time, I stopped mid-row and went and did something, came back, and I started crocheting the wrong direction. I crocheted the wrong direction for a long time till I realized that I had left off part of this row way down here and I was up here and I had back and forth crocheted here but I had stopped and and I switched it around so that I was crocheting in the wrong direction. Now I know that sounds silly but never stop in the middle of a row. Always finish your row and I like to finish the row anyway because it makes me have a feeling of completion and that way I can put my stitch marker in there. Always put a stitch marker in your last loop because if you don't you're going to rip that crochet out and you just have to redo that last few stitches or maybe even more if you get caught on something and you pull that string. If you have a stitch marker in there it won't go anywhere. So I learned late in life to use a stitch marker at the end of uh, a session so that I didn't lose my crochet stitches. When you're reading through your crochet pattern look at the abbreviations. I try not to use too many 
and all my abbreviations are at the beginning of the pattern. If I've used them, they're there. If I haven't used them, they're not on that list. So you only have the ones that you need for my patterns. On other patterns, you might have a lot of abbreviations. You might have just a few. Go through the pattern and make sure that you understand what the abbreviations mean. If you don't know how to do a starting popcorn stitch, for example, that was my uh, problem last, last video, I had to uh, look it up on Google and find a video for it and write it down and that could have all been put in by the designer and I still say the designer should have put that in her pattern because not many people use popcorns all the time. Now double crochet, single crochet, all that, you don't need to explain those things but a popcorn stitch is a little bit odd and you know some people design a popcorn stitch with four double crochets or with six double crochets. It's not always just five. Uh, maybe that's the standard number. I've never known that, but I did use five because I think in somewhere in the pattern she mentioned five, but I don't think it was at the beginning of when she was talking about popcorn stitches. So important to look at the abbreviations and make sure you understand what they mean before you start. And that way, if you need to write down what the popcorn stitch is, then you can just quickly write down the steps to when you get there, you won't have to go and find it on the internet and look at videos and all that. You will have already done that in preparation for making this particular pattern. Now tip number five, I don't do myself. <laughs> I don't say do what I say, don't do what I do, but I advise people when they're making a pattern to take it slow. Always take your crochet slowly and when you're looking at your piece, always check. As you go through your first few rows, be sure to check to be sure that if you're making a rib stitch that you're stacking those correctly. Don't wait till you get up into the body and go, whoa, look at that rib stitch. That's not right. Oh my, don't do that. Always stop at least a half row or at the end of the row and check your work so that you don't have to frog out so much if you make a mistake. Again, I have made that mistake so many times because I didn't double check my work as I was working on um, a special stitch pattern or a row pattern. I would do two rows of double crochet instead of one and there. You can't change that when you get up to the neckline. I mean, you just have to either put the whole project away or frog it all out or ignore it. You can do one of the three things. <laughs> and a lot of times I will ignore it. If it's on the back and I'm not worried about it, but that's when I'm designing a pattern. When I'm really following a pattern, I always try to make sure that I check my work on every row. So take it slowly. Make sure that your, your work is perfect for you. Make sure that the fit is right, of course, after the first few rows. Stand up, hold your crochet around you, and make sure that it fits the way you want it to. Maybe it needs to go a little bit bigger. You can frog that out at this point you will not have wasted more than 20 or 30 minutes. But if you wait till you get up here and you go, oh, it's just not wide enough, then you have to do a plan B. And y'all have heard me do plan Bs before where I've added stitches under the arms and all that. It's just easier to make sure on maybe the third row to be sure to check it, make sure that you are making the sweater or the top wide enough for your hips. Or if it's too wide, you know, you can always just crochet less and move up and then that will be hidden in the seam, the part that's hanging off. But you, it's harder to add on than it is to take off. So that is a, a set of tips for not beginner crocheters. I mean, it applies to everybody. So uh, I wanted to get on here and give you some tips for crochet because it's important that you maybe absorb some information from, from me or someone else and uh, that's the way we learn. I learn from all kinds of crocheters, different tricks and tips. So I wanted to give you some of those today. I'm leaving that right there. This is a late week video. This is a Thursday video. Happy Thursday. And I'll be back on Monday with another video. I'm actually going to try to release a video either today or tomorrow about an unboxing I'm doing with the collaboration and uh, with another company called Crafties and I mentioned it last video but I offered to take a paint by number kit and actually do the paint by number and then give one away as well. I always tell my collaborators that my focus is my viewers and so I want to give away what I'm working on so in most cases that's what I'll do. The collaborator always gives me enough to give away to a viewer something similar to what I'm doing so and I agreed to that and I'll be um, releasing a video where I talk about um, 
these two paint by number kits and which one I'll be giving away and which one I'll be working on. So um, if you're subscribed and you've hit the bell, then you'll get the notice that that one comes out. You might watch it. So be sure to like this video before you click away. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't and press that bell for notifying you to let you know when I release a video and you won't miss anything. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you have a great weekend as well. And join me next time to find out what's on the hook.